Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Vinicius. I'm very happy to present the work Graphical Models in heavy Tilt Markets. This is a joint endeavor with my friends, Jashing and Professor Daniel Palomar. Uh, this work was recently presented uh, in the NeurIPS 2021, and we are based uh, here in Hong Kong, Uni Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Now, in this work, we are interested in estimating the Laplacian matrix of a graph. Now, to begin with, we model the node set of the graph as a um, multivariate random Gaussian vector. So we are interested in estimating the, pre the precision matrix of this um, random vector, assuming that um, the precision matrix is modeled as a Laplacian matrix. Now, state-of-the-art methods, they've relied on the following optimization problem, which is just the maximum likelihood estimator of the precision matrix. Um, but one caveat of this optimization problem, even though it's, it's convex, it's easy to solve, um, it, the estimator may be very sensitive to outliers, and also it may be totally inadequate if the data matrix comes from, for example, from a heavy tail distribution. So this is often the case in financial markets. Um, an installized fact, for example, of financial data is that the data is often heavy tailed. So for instance, we have an example here where um, we fit a Gaussian PDF around the empirical distribution of the log returns of the SP500 index. And as we observe, the Gaussian fit does not do a good job, especially around the tails of the empirical distribution. So what that means is that the Gaussian is underestimating the probability of heavy tail events um, happening in practice, which is quite dangerous, especially when it involves um, financial tasks such as portfolio design. It may be very dangerous for investors, especially if the left tail is, is um, underestimated. So um, let's see what we propose uh, to estimate Laplacian matrices. We start by uh, modeling the random um, vector of, of nodes as a student T multivariate um, distribution whose PDF is given as follows, where uh, theta is the inverse scatter, scatter matrix of the distribution, which is just a scaled version of the uh, precision matrix. And nu is a parameter called degrees of, of freedom, which basically controls how heavy the tails of the distributions are. So um, as nu increases, for example, uh, this distribution converges to the Gaussian distribution. And as nu is closer to two, uh, the tails get um, heavier and heavier. So given n realizations of this random vector, we write down the robustified uh, maximum likelihood estimator for the precision matrix as the following non-convex optimization problem, uh, where calligraphical L here is a linear operator that maps a vector of edge weights to a valid Laplacian matrix, and calligraphical D is a, also a linear operator that maps the same vector of graph weights into a vector of node degrees. And this constraint, uh, this equality constraint here, especially the degree constraint is quite important in practice as we will see um, in the uh, numerical experimentation section. Now we extend our previous formulation to a wider class of graphs, for example, K component graphs, by leveraging the fact that the rank of the Laplacian matrix is directly related to the number of components of the graph. For example, the rank of the Laplacian is equal to P minus K, where K is the uh, number of components of the graph. However, to introduce this constraint direct directly into the optimization problem um, would be a little bit complicated because this constraint is non-convex as well as non-differentiable. So what we do instead is we rely on Fan's theorem, which says that the sum of the first k eigenvalues of a PSD matrix is equal to the optimal value of this optimization problem on the right-hand side, where the optimal value for V is just uh, the k first eigenvectors of the Laplacian matrix, of course, associated with the smallest uh, k eigenvalues. So we write down component graph learning as the following uh, non-convex optimization problem. And to find stationary points of this optimization problem and the previous one, we rely on optimization frameworks such as uh, the alternating direction method of multipliers as well as the majorization minimization. And for the mathematical details around the derivations of um, 
these algorithms, please uh, take a look at our manuscript as well as the attached uh, supplementary material. Now onto the experiments, we, um, we conduct experiments um, involving three financial instruments, um, US, stock, um, US stocks, foreign exchanges, um, as well as cryptocurrencies. And we benchmark our model against four state-of-the-art methods. Um, two of them, they rely on the Gaussian assumption as well as uh, on sparse regularization terms. And the other two, they rely, uh, they, are, they, are, they were designed for key component graph estimation. So uh, on our first experiment here, uh, we see on the, on the left-hand side, the, the graph estimated by the GLE method which uh, basically solves the first optimization problem that convex one with, a Ga with Gaussian assumptions. And um, just a little bit of background, here we have uh, three sectors. Each color represent a sector and uh, gray edges. They represent um, intersector connections. So as a, um, from an intuitive point of view, we would expect uh, um, very few numbers of edges between um, nodes from different sectors, just because the stocks in the same sector, they are often more correlated. So uh, we would, in practice, we would expect um, a smaller number of those connections, but that's not what we actually see on the first plot um, outputted by GLE. And uh, when we introduce um, when, when actually, when we use uh, sparse regularizations by the NGL method, uh, we see a, a quite a substantial improvement um, in modularity index, for example, of the graph, and also uh, by visualizing the graph, um, where the, this graph is much more sparse than the previous one. However, one disadvantage is that we need to fine tune this sparsity uh, parameter, which is in practice is a cumber, cumbersome task to do. Uh, whereas our method using the student T distribution, it outputs a graph that is um, already sparse without the need to tune uh, any additional parameter. And also it has a higher modularity value. Now onto the um, K component experiments, we see a very similar uh, behavior where the first two benchmark methods, they output kind of dense graphs. And also they are unable to separate um, the, the three sectors in an intuitive way. Whereas our method that relies on the student distribution um, outputs more meaningful clusters, which suggests that the student is a better uh, model for this type of data. Now for foreign exchange data, we don't have um, a particular label for each node, a particular sector. Um, so to say. So what we rely on to measure the quality of the graph is on the modularity index of the graph, as well as, as, well as on intuitive properties of the underlying network. For example, we would expect um, currencies from nearby countries to be somewhat correlated to each other. And that's what actually we will observe on our student T graph, whereas on the other graphs, they are um, the, the larger clusters, for example, they are not sparse, which, which makes it difficult to draw, to draw conclusions. And also we note here a, a issue with the, um, with the component estimation because the first two formulations, they don't consider constraints on the degrees of the nodes. So we observe isolated nodes, both for SGL and CLR, whereas in our method, we impose um, degree constraints using our proposed linear operator. So it's, we, don't, we avoid this uh, issue altogether. So for cryptocurrencies, we observe a similar, um, a similar fact where SGL and CRR, they, are, they output quite dense um, clusters and also uh, isolated nodes, whereas our student T method outputs a more reliable graph and also uh, we observe that some clusters uh, for cryptocurrencies, um, they, they are um, more intuitive. For example, the Dash, Z, Cash and Monero, they are coins uh, that work clustered together by our method. And they are coins that focus, for example, on privacy issues. So there is um, quite a strong evidence to, that indicates that the student T distribution is a better model 
for also for this type of data coming from cryptocurrencies. So thank you very much for listening to my talk and the code is available. Um, the code for the algorithms is available on GitHub. And also if you want to contact me, uh, please feel free here. Here's my um, social media handles. Thank you very much.